Welcome back, everybody. Now we're going to be looking at Newton's third law. We're going to be um, talking about what people oftentimes call the action-reaction law. And it's got a kind of a, a commonplace um, explanation or description. People oftentimes say for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, and that's a pretty accurate summation of it. Um, but the one way we can actually think of it as being... Uh, we can refer to it as uh, contact forces. Uh, and that's, that's the context that we're going to be talking about Newton's third law. Usually when you think of action, reaction, or Newton's third law, you think of a, like a rocket ship where you have, um, here's a spaceship right here, and it's got you know, this rocket booster, and it's blasting out uh, hot gases in that direction. Well, that's the action, and then the reaction is that the rocket is being pushed forward. Well, that's definitely true, but really somewhere in there, somewhere right at the front of this nozzle, you might call that the contact surface. That is, that's the surface where the gases are being pushed away from the rocket and the rocket is being pushed away from the gases. That's that one surface right there. So we're going to think of this in terms of contact forces. Um, think of it this way. If two people are standing and uh, they're pushing against each other. This person here has their hand out and this person right here is standing and they have their much longer, uglier hand out. There we go, this guy only has one arm. All right, they're pushing against each other. This person can't say, because that person's pushing that direction this person is pushing this direction right here. They can't say, I'm pushing harder than you. I'm pushing harder. I guess you could, I guess one person could be pushing harder and the other person would be pushing backwards. But for that contact surface right there, that is, um, that one surface, the force between their two hands is equal both ways. That is to say, between their hands, it's not like this person uh, on the right-hand side feels uh, five newtons on their hand, and this person on this side feels uh, three newtons on their hand. No, they both feel the exact same amount of pressure on their hands. We call that the contact surface. And so regardless of if one person is pushing the other person backwards, they're both still feeling the exact same, uh, you might say, f well, force on that contact surface, which is their hands right there. So one way we can think of it is this, um, that this person is not pushing harder, they're pushing equally, and this is our equation, really, that we can sort of sum this up in. We can say that the force uh, from person one on to person two. All right, so this is person one right here. This is person two and over here. The force of from person one to two is equal to the opposite, or you might say the negative, of force two to one. There are going to be equal forces but opposite in direction. That contact surface is one contact surface. You can't have two different forces on one single contact surface. Know that the, those forces are going to be equal. Each person is going to feel the same amount of pressure on their hand, just in different directions. All right, and we're going to apply this now uh, to, uh, to some examples from our notes. So let's turn that off and turn this on right here. Here's a good example. We've got people in uh, in canoes. All right, and two uh, groups of canoeists meet in the middle of a lake. This is convenient because lake um, lakes being fluid, there's very little friction, and so you can push off fairly easily in a canoe, and that um, uh, very little of that force will be lost to friction. So we're going to ignore friction because they're in a lake. All we're going to be concerned with is the force to separate the two different canoes. All right. So I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. Let's look at this uh, in a little more detail. Two groups of canoeists. Okay, great. We have two canoes right here. Uh, and this is canoe one on this side, and this is canoe two 
on that side right there. Person in canoe one pushes canoe two the force of 46 newtons. Okay? 46 newtons. So the force from one to two is 46 newtons. But the same thing is true of the force that it, the reaction force you might say on um, on canoe one, because you might say that the person in canoe one is putting forty six newtons of force into canoe two. Yes, but since they're pushing off of canoe two, they're receiving a backwards force of forty six newtons as well. You might say the force from canoe two on to canoe one is going to be negative. 46 newtons. Okay, so these two canoes right here, let's see, I'm just draw them. That's a canoe, and that's a canoe. They look like hot dogs, I realize. Um, so this is one, and this is two, right here. That means the net force on canoe one is going to be negative 46 newtons. The net force equals 46 newtons. The net force on canoe 2 is going to be, not a very good equal sign, is going to be 46 newtons. All right? So that's what Newton's third law tells us, that for the action that is um, exhibited by the person in canoe 1, they're also going to feel that same reaction, push them backwards as well. Uh, mass of canoe one and its occupants is 150 kilograms. All right, I'm going to write that down. Um, I'm just going to write here. Mass one equals 150 kilograms. And the mass of canoe two is 250 kilograms. All right, so... What is the acceleration of canoe one? What is the acceleration of canoe two? Well, the way we've set it up, we've made it really easy on ourselves because we know from Newton's second law that the net force, the mass, uh, and acceleration are very, very closely related. All right, so part A, <clears throat> say the acceleration of one is going to be the force the net force on canoe one divided by the mass of canoe one. Well, that's going to be easy. Negative 46 newtons divided by, and by the way, I'm going to write my vector arrows here, divided by the mass, 150 kilograms, the mass of canoe one. Negative 46 divided by 150, that's 0 0.3. Zero seven meters per second squared. All right, let's find the acceleration of canoe two. Well, the exact same thing, just different numbers. Net force. Oh, and by the way, I'll come. Well, I'll come back to this in a second. Net force on two divided by the mass of two. So the net force on two is the same thing as net force on one. It's just in the positive direction. So that's forty-six newtons. Divide by what's the mass of canoe two? Oh, my phone's ringing. That is, I don't care about that. Call from public assistance. Public assistance? I don't need any public assistance. Um, 250 kilograms. All right, so what is the acceleration of canoe two? 47 divided by 250. I get 0 0.188 meters per second squared. Okay, now look at this acceleration here. One thing I didn't do in part one was add this minus sign here, right? And that was that's that's my bad because look here, if the acceleration, I'm sorry, if the net force on canoe one is in the negative direction, then since that's a vector and the, and the acceleration vector is dependent upon that, the acceleration is going to be in that negative direction as well. A negative force creates ultimately a negative acceleration. So we have a negative acceleration on canoe one. We've got a positive acceleration on canoe two. And look, 
the accelerations are different. They have the same force on each canoe, but since the masses are different, that means they're going to accelerate at different rates. So the contact force is the same, but clearly, because they're different masses, one's going to move apart slower, one's going to move apart faster um, because of the different masses. All right, part B here. What is the separation of the canoes after 1.2 seconds of pushing? All right, well, that just simply means um, that force has been applied for 1.2 seconds. So the time is um, 1.2 seconds. What is the separation? What is that asking us? Oh, that must mean displacement, right? That's how far apart they've gotten. So displacement is what we're solving for. Um, our acceleration of the canoes. Ah, this is, um, okay. Acceleration of one, acceleration two. We have two different accelerations here. So what we're going to need to do is find out how far each canoe moved, delta x1 and delta x2, after 1.2 seconds, and then add them together. We'll find out our whole, our whole distance. Does that make sense? Like if this is a starting point right here, this canoe moved that much, that's delta x1, and this canoe moved this much, that's delta x two right there, so to add them up, that's our whole separation right there. So let's find our displacement for each of those uh, accelerations and times. Um, so, uh, look at my pen here. All right, so for one, so for canoe one, our displacement equals initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. Initial velocity is zero, right? So it's simply our displacement one equals, oop, delta x one, is one half times acceleration one times time squared. And uh, ooh, I'm gonna run out of space here. Um, displacement two is one half times acceleration two times time squared. Okay? One half acceleration one. What is that? Um, negative zero point three zero seven times our time. One point two seconds squared. Sorry, I didn't put the units in there. I'm getting short on space. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna cheat and move this uh, around a little bit. I did not save myself enough space here. And um, so that means our delta x1 is going to be 0.5 times negative 0 0.307 times 1.2 squared. Negative 0 0.22 meters. To put a dotted line box around that. All right, well, delta x2 is going to be 1 half times acceleration 2, which is 0 0.188 meters per second squared times our time, once again, 1.2 seconds squared equals, sorry, that's so tight down there, uh, 0.5 times 1.88 times 1.2 squared. 1.35 meters. Dotted line box around that, delta x2. All right, so our whole, I'll box this in here, so. In fact, you know what? I could have just done myself a favor. Sorry about that, hold on a second here. I'll just lasso this whole thing the whole thing up. You don't even cheat and shrink it a little bit. There we go. Yep, apply that. All right, sorry about that. A little, uh, little Photoshop uh, housekeeping there. So our total displacement is going to be 
um, 0.22 meters plus 1.35 meters that should give us a total displacement of 1.57 meters after that 1.2 seconds of pushing Whew. sorry about that it was a little uh, little short on space there down at the bottom but we found the uh, acceleration each canoe gets and the displacement after 1.2 seconds that the two canoes got. So there you have it. That's our canoe action reaction or contact force example. Hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.